Hi, hello, and welcome or welcome back to this channel. I've been wanting to make more YouTube content. I've been saying that I want to get into doing more YouTube content since I'm not streaming as much anymore, but I just d don't. <laughs> And now I was just, you know, doing my little booksy things and I thought, okay, might as well make some content out of that because that's what I've been wanting to do. I wasn't kidding when I said I made reading books my entire personality again, so I want to share that with the world. I want to make some content out of that. I want to I want to do stuff with that. I thought I'd do a little September wrap up ignoring the fact that it's already the 9th of October and a little October TBR even though I've already read one book so far not many but the books that I've read in September I started off with Haunting Adeline which was a lot <laughs> it was a lot I like my dark romances I like my dark romanticies but boy when they said that Haunting Adeline was really out of pocket and really a lot, I did not think that it would be this out of pocket and this much. I did thoroughly enjoy myself though. It was, it told me some things about myself as well, but it was a good book. I liked it. It follows this girl Adeline who's a, an author and this guy... <laughs> Zaid, who kind of gets a little obsessed with our dear girl Adeline. She wants nothing to do with him at first, but as their story and relationship progresses, I really liked Adeline and I really liked Zaid. Like, I liked both of those characters a lot, even though like in the first couple of sentences, I don't have the physical book. In the first couple of uh, chapters, when he sees Adeline, he says something along the lines of, I, she's perfect. I want to break her. I want to destroy her only so I can be the person who repairs her and, and builds her up again which is you know the, uh, sir <laughs> you have issues the way like he cares for her i guess it's it's a lot but it's good when i finished it which i did within like a, a couple of days i believe I, I finished it real quick i immediately wanted to read hunting adeline so i did and that just fell flat haunting adeline i gave four and a half stars because i did really enjoy it not five stars i don't remember exactly what did i write down this book had me in a chokehold <laughs> i knew <laughs> i knew going into it that it's a dark dark romance but i did not expect this balls to the walls crazy i honestly really liked it though learned some new things about myself i guess zaid ooh wee he has some issues but don't we all a little insane but then again he kills people for a living that's very you that's not really a spoiler he's basically into killing people who are in the people trading world it's not a five star because sometimes i felt like it got crazy for the sake of getting crazy that's what i felt like sometimes you know like south park sometimes just gets offensive for the sake of being offensive like it just went too crazy sometimes just for the sake of you know the craziness it was just not a five stars for me hunting adeline i gave a three stars because i did not like it as much my experiences were just too high after absolutely loving haunting adeline and it ending in such a giant cliffhanger because it does boy does it end in a cliffhanger but i also thought the time that adeline was someplace dragged on a little bit adeline was somewhere at some point a lot of trauma a lot of stuff that was just not really enjoyable to read i did i did not like this part that much and it was a very large large part of the book though and those scenes also felt like being crazy for the sake of being crazy i'm just gonna say the high heel scene that was just unnecessary in my opinion you don't know what i mean with that when i say it if you haven't read the book yet but the high heel scene was just unnecessary just not okay just why i don't like the way characters treated each other as well either after uh, reading the book didn't like it that much but three stars is still not a bad rating in my opinion so i gave it three stars and then i read a witch's guide to fake dating a demon which was nice it was a nice read it was what the 11th of september so it was starting to get a little chilly for one week and then it was scorching hot again i was getting into that fall mood i was lighting candles I was reading on my Kindle and I was just having a nice chilly little moment and the cover of that book has like fall leaves, a fall fair is part of it. I just liked it. It was a nice little romanticy palate cleanser I guess after reading some something as crazy as haunting and hunting Adeline. I gave that one four stars and what I wrote about it was I needed something airy and it really scratched that itch. 
it was magical and witchy the side characters were fun like they were really fun you have two best friends alongside the main character i really like those characters they were really fun and i loved the male main character it even had me laughing or gasping out loud a couple of times the mother in this book is someone you also run into a lot the mother of the main character the things she says like <laughs> just at one point i was just sat there like physically with my mouth open because it was it's ridiculous she's a ridiculous character which makes it a lot of fun it's not a five star because the whole love of this romance it just felt very rushed sometimes a little romeo and juliet-esque you know like i've known your name for maybe five minutes but i would die for you it was a little you know a little whoa <laughs> and also there's a little miscommunication part in the book which i hate I don't like that. I think it's a little easy writing, I guess. I don't like it when there's miscommunication parts in books because I feel like things can be solved in 0.7 seconds if the characters would just talk for a second. It just frustrates me. And that took a little too long too, like one or two chapters. And I, it was just, it had me frustrated. And that's why I, I won't give a book five stars if it has me frustrated like that, you know? I honestly thought it went from like a four and a half stars to maybe five stars during the book. And then it went to three stars in, in that moment because I was just that frustrated. But the ending made up for it. I like the way it ended and how they solved things together i still gave it four four stars in the end boy the miscommunication stuff like that annoys me <laughs> it's not fun and then in october i wanted to read the spooky the creepy type of books i wanted to get cozy i wanted to get comfy i wanted to get halloween so that's what we're doing uh it's already october 9th so i i have already read two books oh no i read yeah i read if we were villains in in september still so that is still my september list i guess yeah no, this book broke me. I actually managed to get a signed edition of this book for some reason. It broke me. I actually did not know that we have the dock in the inside of this book. I had no clue. <gasps> That's them. <gasps> They're sitting there on the dock. Oh my gosh. I had no clue. Oh, she's gorgeous. I had no clue that Maria was that pretty. Oh, I had no clue. Oh, she's gorgeous. And she broke my heart. So there's that. This book takes place. Wait, let me just read you the blurb. Oliver Marks has just served 10 years for the murder of one of his closest friends, um, a murder he may or may not have committed. On the day he's released, he's greeted by the detective who put him in prison. Detective Colborn is retiring, but before he does, he wants to know what really happened 10 years ago. As a young actor studying Shakespeare at an elite arts conservatory, cons conservatory Oliver noticed that his talented classmates uh, seem to play the same roles on stage and off. Villain, hero, tyrant, temptress, though Oliver felt doomed to always be a secondary character in someone else's story. But when the teachers change up the casting, a good-natured rivalry turns ugly, and the place spilled dangerously over into life. When tragedy strikes, one of the seven friends is found dead. The rest face their greatest acting challenge yet, convincing the police and themselves that they are blameless. I wish I had done a reading vlog for this. I, I've never done that before, but I wish I would have filmed myself in between while reading this, thinking like, okay, who done it? What happened? Who died? <laughs> Truly. It's lovely because this book is sectioned off in acts, like plays actually are, because they are all thespians. They play in actual theater pieces, all Shakespeare pieces. There's five acts. This is act one. And then you get all these scenes, which are the chapters, of course. This is the place where they do the, I think this is the addition part still. They just continuously quote Shakespeare off stage as well. Cause they're, you know, they eat, sleep and live and breathe Shakespeare. Oh, this is one of the awesome scenes. There's seven friends and there's four boys, uh, three girls. And you follow Oliver. Everything is from the point of view of Oliver. He just feels so normal so boy next door compared to his classmates who are just fantastic in everything they do in his opinion one of the girls is just absolutely gorgeous and everyone just you know snaps their heads looking at her when she leaves the room one of them is like like that like it said in the blurb like a tyrant he's this this great strong man who just consumes a room where he's in like he takes all of the breath out of the out of the air and then we have oliver's best friend james who he shares a room with he is just you know the leonardo dicaprio the hero the gorgeous gorgeous boy and he's very jealous of james but also in awe and that's why they're like such good friends like they really like each other and wow this book i had my suspicions i thought i knew who done it and i knew so i wish i would have filmed that because i was right the ending had me feeling some type of way like it had me laughing it had me crying 
it felt so incredibly profound because it was all just a lot of Shakespeare. I felt smart reading it. <laughs> Even though I'm an English major, it doesn't matter. I just still felt very like an intellectual reading this book. It was just so good. I finished it. I had like an actual like very, very big book hangover. Like I, w I was just, it left a hole in my chest and I had to look up things like, are we getting a, a part two or are we seeing what else happens? I had to read fan fiction. <laughs> to feel some sort of closure on this book. It was a lot, but it was so good. It was so good. I don't give books six stars a lot. I'm not that stingy with my five stars, but some books are just fantastic. Like for instance, A Court of Mist and Fury did that for me, but this most certainly has done that for me. So incredibly good. If you're gonna read any book out of this video, it should be this one, especially around this time of year. And then what I wanted to read this uh, month, well, after this, I wanted to read something a little easy to read which are honestly dark romanticies for me. They're very easy for me to get through. So I read Twisted, I'd already read Hooked by Emily McIntyre. They're retellings of fairy tales. Not really, no. Hooked is a, a retelling of uh, Peter Pan, it's not. This is a retelling of <laughs> Aladdin, it's not. Some characters are kind of named the same thing and they play somewhat similar roles, uh, but I liked it. I liked Hooked a lot. I gave Hooked uh, four stars and I gave this one a three and a half stars because Hooked was just a little bit better in my opinion and I like the spicy scenes a little bit better. This was just enjoyable. This was a, a, an enjoyable read for me. What is it about? Yasmin Karam, daughter of one of the richest men in the world. I mean, yeah has never known strife so when her beloved father falls ill she's determined to make his final days his happiest his last wish to see her married to a man of his choosing except yasmin's heart already belongs to someone else a servant a man her father would never consider worthy and his, that boy's name is aiden so i think that's just like aladdin but minus the l so stuck between a rock and a hard place jasmine strikes a deal with her father's right hand man julian not realizing he had his own twisted agenda, Julian being Jafar. Julian Farachi has one goal, become the most powerful man in the world. He's built a future from broken bones and faded bruises, never caring who he hurt along the way. But when his mentor falls ill, being Ali, Yasmin's father, he finds himself on the verge of losing everything and he'll stop at nothing to inherit what is rightfully his, even if it means forcing a woman he can't stand into marriage. Yasmin is a brat who speaks out of turn. They keep saying she's a brat, but I really didn't feel like she was much of a brat. She was just a girl. He's the villain of her story, but he decides she'll be his no matter what it takes to convince her. I liked it. I like Julian as a character. I didn't like Yasmin that much. With Hooked, I really did like Wendy and Hooked of course, I really liked as well. But with this one, I don't know. At least with Julian, we get some character depth. We learn what his issues are. We learn why he is the way he is. We learn his history and his trauma. But for Yasmin, it just feels like it stays very much on the surface and we don't really dive deep into what makes her her. And she stays the same throughout the book, I feel like, even though Julian really grows as a character. But it's, it's still an enjoyable book. I liked it. It was an, an easy read. The font is ginormous, so you can really read it very well. I just flew through this, even though it has 421 pages. That was on my TBR of October. Then again, I want to read books. I tried to follow along the Aurelium readathon in August and I read one one book of that and then I just read whatever I felt like which were only four books too. I want to read more than four books because I read seven books in July and then only four books in August and only four books in September. So I want to try to read more books in October. Also, I'm, I'm reading that for my reading log. I have a look. I showed my stream yesterday as well, but... <laughs> I made things, this idea I stole, of course. Most of these ideas are stolen, but still, I just, I like doing this. It's fun, it's good, it's good times. It's, I'm having a good time with this. I'm really proud of this one. Again, stolen ideas, I'm having a good time with it. Uh, now that I'm not streaming as much anymore. What I want to read this October and potentially November as well, if I don't manage to get to these books. I've been listening through uh, to uh, Three Dark Crowns on Storytel. And I also got the, um, the physical copy because I'm really liking it. I got this, uh, this through Vinted very cheaply. It's even though it's like the hardcover and everything. And I've already figured out that when I tried to find my spot, the way things are pronounced, like Arsenoy is the way the lady from the storytell pronounces one of the queens' names. That was so confusing because it's spelled like Arsen... No, no, no. A-R-S 
A-R-S-I-N-O-E. But apparently that's Arsenoi. I did a silly though, because I clicked this book or like I clicked on one of these books on my shelf in Storytel and then it turned out to be the second book. So I was listening to that for like a solid hour because I like to listen to these books when I drive home from work because I usually am stuck in traffic for a long time. So I want to spend that time reading, but I can't. So I listened to Storytel. It was a particularly bad traffic day that day and I was stuck in traffic for like an hour and 20 minutes. I was that far into, what is it? What's the second one? One Dark Throne? Three Dark Crowns, that's the first one. One Dark Throne two dark reigns and five dark fates. There's four one. Okay, I thought there were three. I got three. <laughs> so I've been listening to One Dark Throne for an hour and 20 minutes. And like all the way through, I was like, why am I this confused? Like, why are there so many characters introduced? Why does it feel like I should know these characters better than I do? It feels like I'm hearing things that I should know more about. And alas, when I finally arrived home, I saw that that was not the first, but indeed the second book of the series. So I started listening to the first book in the series and I was like, oh, so I heard some spoilers. <laughs> I know some things that I should not know because I did, you know, I was focusing. I was trying to make sense of everything because I wanted to get into the book. So I was just like, you know, <laughs> trying to make sense of it. I learned about 20 characters in, in like that hour. So that was honestly impressive, if I'm honest. But I started listening to the first book now and I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. So I hope to finish this. What I also really would like to read is Caraval or Caraval or whatever. I again bought this through Vinted for like a few euros. I really want to read the Once Upon a Broken Heart books because everyone keeps raving about those. Like all the book besties on YouTube say that it's an amazing book. And I want to read the Once Upon a Broken Heart. And they say you can read them separately from this. But they also say like it's more enjoyable when you first read this trilogy. Somehow I got the Three Dark Crowns books. I got the first edition. Three of them for 15 euros. Like, what do you mean? So there's there's that. So I want to read this. I want to read this this October. I want to get to it. It's YA, so I should fly through this and then potentially get the second and the third book as well and then get to Once Upon a Broken Heart. It's a little magical. It's YA fantasy. It's my bed, bed and brother. What? <laughs> my bread and butter. I should like that a lot. So I want to read it. If I need a little palate cleanser, you know, the psychotic way. I also got this one already. Scarred. Again, through Vinted for only like five or six euros, even though I can't get them cheaper than like 13 or 14 euros in a bookstore here. So that's nice. It's relatively new still. So I want to read this one too as a palate cleanser in between books when I need to read something that just doesn't take any brain power. Because I was thinking of after If We Were Villains, I wanted to read The Secret Society by Donna Dart because everyone says like you either like the one or the other or both. They're similar. Dark academia, mystery thrillers, basically. I don't know. I think that will take a, a little bit more brain power than I want to give right now because, you know, I am a teacher as well. I need to be mindful of my brain power. Another... Oh, look at the flop. Oof. Oof. That's a good flop. Another little book that I wanted to read was Payback's a Witch. I got this from Gigi. This should also be a nice little easy read. 331 pages. It's nice and Halloween-y fall themed. So I want to read this. I don't know what it's about <laughs> anymore. A witch, but not a very powerful one. Oh, whatever that is. I like it. Many here. Hey, I have had Legends and Lattes on my TBR for so long now. Someone from my community kindly gifted it to me. I don't even know how long ago. A couple of months at least. It's apparently such a, a comfy, cozy read. It should give you all the nice, cozy vibes and feels. I've taken it out of its book sleeve already and put it on my nightstand along with other books that I wanted to read. And I just keep not reading it. I just want to read it. I want to do it. So I really hope I can get myself to read it in October because I don't know what's stopping me. This should this should be everything that I love. Cause you know, I like DD. I like comfy cozy vibes. It's like in a tavern or something. It's good stuff. Everyone likes it. I should just read it. I should just read it. I don't know what's stopping me. Another book that I got that I would like to write, uh write, <laughs> read is A Lesson in Vengeance. Another apparently good book about oh yeah it's a little dark academia too felicity morrow is back at the dalloway school dalloway probably school perched in the catskill mountain centuries old she was recovering from a tragic death of her girlfriend now after a year away she's returned to finish high school and then i believe she makes another friend and they're together they're going to try to figure out what's going on at that school and why people die or something yeah the dalloway five all died mysteriously one after another right on Gotwing grounds so they're going to try to figure out like what happened Happen? why why do these people keep dying i believe it's yeah it's queer because you know uh the girlfriend died of our female main character so i'm, I'm excited to read this too victoria lee another pretty pretty author we love women in this household good job good job on your face <laughs> 
<laughs> well done. <laughs> uh, 300, what, 70 pages? Yeah, 370 pages. So that's okay. That's doable. I don't know why, but longer books have really been freaking me out. I don't want to, I don't want to get into series and I don't want to get into like book stoppers because I, I just feel like I don't have the brain power for them right now as, you know, a high school teacher who's also a mentor of a class now. Like I have, I have things going on in my life. And the book I was maybe most excited for was A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. And I really wanted to get a signed copy. So I was talking to my friend in the US who was potentially going to get me a signed copy. But look at this, look at this version. And then Illumicray just pulled through. The book box of this month was a signed version of A Study in Drowning. So I'm so very excited to read this because this is also dark academia. This is perfect. Look, and the sentences are nice and spaced. I'm so excited to read this. I really am. Come through, Illumicray. What does the cover look like again? Oh, look at that. It's like fairy tales there's like a, a fake king or something fairy king and then they're like rivals rival students like yes get it this really sounds up my of my alley so i i really am excited to read this book too i still have to finish jeanette mccurdy's i'm glad my mom died because i started listening to this and it was so good she read it she read it out loud on storytell and then they took the book off of storytell that was even more heartbreaking to listen to it when she was saying everything there's a lot of trauma going on but she wrote it beautifully on my to-do for this year or on my tbr is like at least one memoir i really just want to read this i want to finish this i need to finish it get through it rose come on of course i want to finish the three dark crowns series try to listen to it or read the books maybe in the my fall break as well and if none of these suit my feelings because i only have one yeah one dark romance in there i do like to read dark romances if i just want to turn my brain off it's easy for my brain i got the book of Azriel from one of my community members uh Hibasis, uh for my birthday wow this feels thick <laughs> wait hold on now <laughs> this is heavy how many hello who are you wait what is this about for a thousand years after the god's war the ether world has known peace but soon that too will change an old enemy driven by revenge slowly builds an army behind the scenes temples are being ransacked in search of an item long lost and enemies since the dawn of time must put aside their uh, differences if they have any hope of survival wait this is not what i thought it was wait whenever people describe the book of Azrael, they say it's like a dark romanticy book one in the gods and monster series i mean yeah but what do you mean oh my god they even have a spotify list let's go okay i don't like how close the letters are to each other it's not nice and spaced that gives my brain a heart attack already Jeez, how many pages is this okay so maybe this is not an easy read then because it's 500 pages and it's romanticy so it's like probably more fantasy than i thought i thought it was just like a you know a twisted scar type of book but it's not this is so hefty okay maybe maybe not probably not if i look at my very large book pile there i want to say that's not going to be it but i also got this one the stalking jack the ripper book which should be a little bit easier to read as well i love carrie meniscalco's writing i know envy's book just came out but i really just want to take a second to read that i might this should be easier as well to read it's about a woman who loves jack the ripper it seems spicy she writes spicy scenes that are chef's kiss i love the kingdom of the wicked series i rated all three books five stars i want to say yep five stars five stars and then i it took me a little bit to get into kingdom of the feared but also five stars so i i really want to read throne of the fallen i want to get into that but i just need to find a second if i if i want to do that also i got the new book the new percy jackson book so i might also want to get into that these are just very october books especially like this one this one and this one god of all is just a nice YA. scarred is just there let's and latte should also be a nice comfy cozy read some might carry over to november but these are the books that i want to try and read i hope i'm not setting myself up for failure other books that i still need to finish are this is going to hurt i believe i've been reading that for i don't know how long now i read a curse so dark and lonely i read that in like a day because i loved it it was so good i love the female main character i like the male main character uh, it was a good story the way it was written was nice it was nice and high tempo it was ya so it was it, it's a good book i liked it then i started reading the second book and it just didn't grasp me the way the first one did so i immediately kind of put it aside after like i don't know i read maybe like 100 pages of that and i want to continue reading it i want to finish that i want to finish the trilogy but just haven't felt like picking the book back up again and another book series 
series that I really want to start reading again is Throne of Glass. I never finished Throne of Glass. I don't know what it is. Aquadar, A Court of Thorns and Roses, had me, grasped me, didn't let me go. Loved it. Then after I finished that, I started Throne of Grass. Throne of Grass? Throne of Glass. And I liked it. I read like the first four books or something. I read five of the like seven books. I just never finished it and now i feel like i don't want to read all of the books again i gave throne of glass four stars crown of midnight four stars air of fire four stars assassin's blade four stars and queen of shadows four stars so overall it was pretty good but then you get to a book that's entirely through the point of view of someone else that i just don't care about that much and i don't want to and then there's a tandem read you could do and i tried doing that but i just it was just so many pages <laughs> just didn't feel like finishing it but i enjoyed it it's really good i really really like the characters i love manum there's many characters that are really genuinely like i love selena i just need to get into it again but that is what i have read in september and what i want to read in october what i've also kind of read so far already in october and i really hope i can get through some of them probably not all maybe only one or two but i hope i can get through some books during the fall break where i just really take a moment take some time to read and chill relax during this whirlwind of a school year <laughs> already <laughs> see you in the next video whenever that might be i don't want to remove this camera from the place that it, it's at because I'm in fear of breaking it and then I can't stream anymore but then again I don't stream as much anymore so I could just lift this off and put it in different spots I just need to get over that threshold because <laughs> even though this is a nice studio type situation this is my stream room it would be nice to also film in my living room where I spend a lot of my time reading I've been thinking of maybe emptying that chair so I can read there too maybe scoot it to the front so I can do like little reading vlogs in his room as well but I want to be in the same room as Gigi is and he's in the living room because that's where his gaming PC is but yes thank you for watching <laughs> I appreciate you Pippin also says bye that looks Pippin also says bye <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for hanging out. Whoa. What's up? Oh. Pippinara and I are going to cuddle. I might read a book. Hopefully I'll read a book. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. And I hope you have a, a lovely rest of your day. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next video. We'll catch you in the next video, potentially. If there's going to be one, if I can get myself to do more, more YouTube. Some purring ASMR. You're very welcome. Goodbye. <laughs>